Thank you, Tim. Um, great to having you here, Danny, Todd, and all of you. A lot of uh, old faces, I remember. Uh, because the senator has to run, I'm going to tell a very truncated story. My job today was to introduce Senator Wyden uh, and also tell you how 230 came about. That's really simple. Without Senator Wyden and Representative, then, uh, Representative Cox and, and Representative Wyden, we wouldn't have Section 230. It's just impossible to imagine how the Internet would have grown if indecent communication was, was um, the law of the land and intermediaries were responsible for all the content that was on their, their sites, whether it's Twitter or Facebook. You just have to try and imagine that. But that's what Congress is trying to do in the middle of rewriting the Telecommunications Act. The irony is they, when it came to the Internet, Title V, it was a footnote to the great telecommunications rewrite. They said, let's regulate it. And they were trying to protect children. There was a hubbub and big concern about pornography. Time magazine had a story. The senator had a blue book full of obscene pictures that senators would go off and look at. But they really missed the fact that this was not television. It wasn't one to many. You couldn't edit it. It was many to many communications. And that user empowerment was the way to go to empower parents and to allow intermediaries to create safe spaces for kids that act as good Samaritans but not face liability. We, try, we formed an interactive working group of 80 organizations, many of the organizations that are in this room, uh, AOL, Prodigy, uh, Progress and Freedom Foundation, CDT, um, and we tried to educate the Congress in the midst of all of this. We failed in the Senate. We got Senator Leahy to introduce a study, but the study wasn't going to deal with this tsunami. Congress never met a pornography bill that it didn't like or embrace, particularly when it came to a medium they didn't understand. So in the spring of 1995, we went to the House, and the interactive working group, including Danny Weitzner and Progress and Freedom Foundation and AOL and Pickle Prodigy, we went to meet with Congressman Wyman. He got it. New medium. Ought to be democratic. It shouldn't be regulated. Uh, by the government, let users have control, educate parents, and let intermediaries create safe spaces without facing liability. Leahy once tried to study it. I remember meeting with Congressman Wyden, and he said, Jerry, why are we studying it? Let's do it. And Speaker Gingrich had said it was unconstitutional with the help of the Progress and Freedom Foundation. So we had a new Republican Congress interested in decentralized, voluntary, market-driven solutions. And we had a leader who is a bipartisan genius at putting legislation together and how to go and get Republicans and Democrats together and do something. So with us educating and bringing tools and dem doing demonstrations, Congressman Wyden, we worked the draft this statute, and we got Section 230. I can... After you tell your story, I'll tell you how we had to go through the final act of the Supreme Court. But you take us through that House story. Oh, Jerry, thank you. What, what an inflationary introduction. And <laughs> this really does seem almost like, uh, you know, kind of a family reunion to have Jerry and, and Danny in, in, in particular. It's not just Section 230, folks. I mean, the net would not be what it is today if it wasn't for these two and the, and the center. I want to thank them. And, and Todd, a more recent uh, a friend, also giving us lots of good advice. Glad you're on the, on the panel. And uh, it's, it's very hard to kind of recreate you know, all of this, and Jerry did some very good and, and kind of snappy work of kind of summarizing it. I remember shortly after we got into this and we had prevailed in the Supreme Court, my older daughter, who was then in high school, uh, reacted to a story that my staff was passing on. I had just been named one of the most tech-savvy members of the United States Congress. And David Sohn even probably remembers this being in our office later. And boy, was I puffed up about myself. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I said, this is just great news. All of this exciting, you know, te technology. And my high school-age daughter heard about this 
And she just started laughing and couldn't, you know, stop. She was practically purple with the thought of it. And she said, Dad, how can this possibly be? You send a couple of emails, you know, to people and things like, you're one of the most tech-savvy, you know, members of Congress. And she rolled her eyes and she says, I can't even guess what the others are like. (laughs) And part of what's happened, and, you know, all of this has changed very dramatically, of course, in the period since now almost, you know, two decades since the early 1990s. Now, you know, members of Congress have to have smartphones and tweet and the like just to sort of keep up with family and, and, uh, and friends. We have different challenges today in terms of Internet policy, and some of you know what we're up to in terms of protect IP and other issues that I know you all feel, feel strongly uh, about. But back then, you really did have to spend an enormous amount of time trying to lay out, for example, one of the points Jerry was talking about was how the net was different than uh, television because people really didn't know a, a, a lot about it and would just say, oh, the net seems to just be another kind of wire. And so we'd spend a lot of time trying to lay out how it wasn't just uh, another wire through which consumers receive uh, content. It was a network in which everybody could create and, uh, and consume uh, content. And in effect, when you're in that kind of discussion, you're trying to describe what you do with a young ecosystem. And it was all about, in those kind of days of infancy, trying to get it right with respect to regulation taxation and the kind of flip side of avoiding, you know, unnecessary uh, litigation. Now, my colleague in all this was Congressman Chris Cox, Representative Chris Cox, who would proudly tell you that he is one of the most conservative, really libertarian uh, public uh, officials uh, who served. And he and I sat down and said, look, this is pretty simple. This is basically going to be about freedom and innovation. This is what it's all about. And, folks, it's never really changed. We had a news conference yesterday to look back at the electronic privacy law. Some of you are here, Senator Mark Kirk and and myself. Pretty much the same principles were at stake there. And because smart decisions were made back then by Jerry and Danny, you know, in in particular – We didn't mess up the platform. We didn't mess up the platform. And out of this, there is still a reason why so many of the exciting innovations and products and services have been developed in the United States. So this work was extraordinarily important. And I can only imagine what it would have been like over the last 15 years if the Senate position rather than the House position and what eventually became Section 230 hadn't prevailed. The position that the Senate set out would have established liability on all the Internet intermediaries for the Internet content that their network facilitated. So, in effect, this was the first major legislative approach, the approach taken in the United States uh, Senate, to, in effect, sanitize and censor content deemed as objectionable. And so you had everybody all upset, as Jerry mentioned, a Time Magazine article, smut, who was going to possibly be in favor of smut in America? I certainly am not in favor of of smut, but we all tried to say, folks, you're not going to be able to sterilize the Internet. And we started, and Jerry and Danny in particular, at one point I remember a discussion where we asked Chris Cox and I about how many people it would even take to try to implement the Senate legislation. I mean, would you just have a gazillion people all kind of, you know, reading websites and, and, and the like? It just, it just struck us as implausible and something that could really chill both innovation and, uh, and freedom. So as Jerry uh, touched on with his good counsel and, and Danny's, and, and boy, it, it really was a, compa- a campaign during those days because we would have meeting after meeting, and, and Jerry and, and Danny pretty much almost had a post office box up on the hill just trying to you know, make sure that uh, if you had to use snail mail, you could get in uh, touch with them. 
And I think that the principles that we laid out in, in the House, that the net is a tool for democratizing power and empowering individual users who would individually manage their online uh, content that comes into their homes and, and, and businesses, has still been the guiding principle. You didn't need to sanitize uh, the Internet. What you needed to do was make sure that parents and families uh, had the technological tools to filter out the junk, the garbage they don't want their kids uh, to see. So our bill was H.R. 1978, and it was attached as an amendment to the Telecommunications Act that moved through the Senate. But the Senate approach was also attached. So you had these two kind of contradictory approaches uh, to uh, this issue and um, the Internet. And I think uh, uh, Jerry and Danny and your, this panel, uh, Todd, or everybody's going to walk through some of that uh, history in terms of how the courts, you know, dealt with it. But our approach prevailed in the courts, and that's why Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act stands today. It is, in my view, the first of a set of principles that started marching us in the right direction. And the march continues to this day. David was very involved in, in our office in the Internet Tax Freedom Bill, try to limit discriminatory uh, approaches in terms of taxation. We talked about that at Web you know, 2.0. I mean, why would you have a discriminatory regime for digital goods? Why would you, in effect, say that iTunes are going to be treated differently than a physical good? You know, the, the idea of a, of a CD. It doesn't make any sense. And this march over the last kind of 15 to 20 years to try to set up a, a uh, innovation and freedom-friendly approach to the net continues uh, as we uh, discuss these issues today in the Congress. We've been able to protect the network effect from this kind of smothering approach of, of people who were, you know, well-meaning. But that fight that we won really began in the mid-1990s uh, uh, is one that is going to continue uh, to, this, uh, to this day. The other point I, I want to, you know, mention is we – kind of enjoy Twitter and YouTube and Facebook and all of these platforms for speech and, and, and commerce that I think to a great extent has flourished because of the good work that these folks did and, and the fact that we were able to uh, get Section 230 uh, in, into law is going to continue in a variety of, of other kind, kinds of forums to be a major uh, source of debate. I chair the Senate Finance Subcommittee on International Trade. Picture what we did on these kinds of subcommittees 15 to 20 years ago. We would be talking in those subcommittees almost exclusively about barges. We'd be talking about duties. We'd be talking about heavy industry moving products from point A to point B. And I don't take a back seat to anybody in terms of fighting for those industries today. They are very, very important. We need a traditional manufacturing base in this country, and I'm not going to take a back seat to fighting for those industries uh, in the future. But what we also know is that the Internet is going to be the shipping lane of the 21st century. And we had a hearing in the Senate Finance Subcommittee on Trade uh, a couple of months ago that is remarkably different than the kinds of hearings you would have about international trade 15 to 20 years ago. We were talking about cloud computing and what are going to be the possibilities for all these goods and services in the digital space. And boy, the American economy needs them now more than ever because of the chance to make good wages and support a family by having the kinds of jobs that the digital uh, economy uh, offers. So as the Internet grows as something we look at as the shipping lane of the uh, 21st century, a, a central platform for commerce and, and a means by which 
uh, people and societies uh, organized. Recognize that the history you're going to hear about today and Section 230, in my view, had these good folks not been successful and worked with a bunch of us in the Congress, big group of stake stakeholders, I don't think we would have the foundation on which we're building today. I don't think we would have the number of jobs in the digital economy uh, we have today. Everywhere I go, I say, I don't want to be somebody who either gets the net wrong and talks about how it's like a series of tubes or you know something like that. And I don't want to be somebody who stands up and says, oh, my goodness, I invented the Internet and, and, and all the rest. What I have particularly savored about the chance to work on these issues, and I kind of look back at this period back when we started, I had a full head of hair and rugged good looks and, you know, all that is that those of us who could be part of the foundation, part of this kind of juggernaut, the groups that Jerry and Danny had, the 80 groups and all the stakeholders, this um, coalition that spans party and I ideology has been some of the most satisfying work I've been able uh, to be part of. It gives us a foundation to strengthen America's economic future in the decades uh, ahead. I'm going to try to come back. Uh, I don't know exactly about my, my, my prospects, but enjoy this meeting. We've done a lot of interesting sessions at the Internet Caucus since we founded it uh, years ago. This is one to really savor because it's a success story. This is one that a lot of people, even in the audience, uh, had a chance to, uh, to participate. And these folks are the special people uh, who made it happen. And I'm glad that I could play a, a little role in the whole kind of effort. Thanks for having me, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.